try to do the redevelopment bill for Ideal Institute of Technology, and this appointment will just be for those two projects uh, moving forward. I'm sorry. Who made the recommendation? Uh, Cooper Levinson, because they, they're the assigned attorney for this matter, but they have a conflict, so they recommended an attorney that actually handles our tax bills and development <coughs> projects. Resolution 58, adopting the Atlantic County Multi-Jurisdictional Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan 2021. Any questions? Procedures applicable during a declared state of emergency. Questions? Next. Resolution number 60, establishing proceedings pertaining to public comment portion during the City of Pleasantville Council meeting. Any questions? Yes, can you explain? Yes, ma'am, can you explain that? Sure, so typically every municipality or local, local government entity has established procedures that they adopt every year, real. Okay. We did right. not. So. Okay. So it's just the same. That's it. Right. Thank Next is the view of the bill list. We'll look at the bills that we paid between this council meeting and this council meeting and enjoy the bottom of By date, you'll see the bottom three were required transfers, which was payroll, county taxes, and the medical benefit, medical payments to the state for uh, active and retired employees. You go to bills list bills to look and be approved at this time. You go to page one, three quarters way down ACUA. There are two months worth of trash and uh, recycling bills to be paid. Uh, then if you go uh, one below that, county treasurer, that is the gas we use for the month of January. Uh, right now we save about uh, probably 75 cents a gallon versus what we were getting before with uh, uh, the other contract. If you go to page two, uh, near the bottom, revision service plan, that's our January uh, cost for the employees for revision care. Uh, page three, you'll see in the middle SHI International Quirk, $31,800. This is a bill that was paid in September of 2020. They never cashed a check. Uh, then they called and wanted to know why we had not paid. Well, we checked the mail out a year and a half ago. So what we did, we had to avoid a check and a radio show. This is for the, the software for the body camps. You're on page, uh, sorry. On uh, page three. Page three. Page three. Can we go back to page three? Uh, page two, I'm sorry. Sure. I'd like to know uh, CMN Associates, we're paying all these, all these people, what are we paying for? Uh, CMN Associates, they're, they're engineers, and uh, there is for, the first one is for a uh, control operator for three months, uh, 525 a month. Uh, the next one is for street openings, people who open streets for, connect to the store system, or water system, they pay a fee, that fee after inspection goes back to CMA. Um, the other two, cell property and ideal, were things to do with the, uh, the redevelopment and claim board. And a, canvas, them? and a canvas mapping, we asked them to design uh, a mapping area where cannabis would or would not be legal, 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 legal. They're close. And normally the street openings are, I pay them very seldom, that's why you'll see a big number. Street open and out, I understand, but what, did, what are we paying to sell properties? Sell, sell properties and bring it up. Sell properties, we're asking, I think, to be involved with the redevelopment, also with the planning and voting board for uh, changing the planning down there. The, the, the sell property is the one on the old turnpike, I'm sorry, old Tilton Road and the uh, Route 9. And it's really the money is coming out of their escrow account. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. So okay. we paying down. No, no, no. It, it, the bill comes through us, but it comes out of a different account rather than a current fund. Okay. Thank you, sir. Zell and Ideal or escrow accounts? Yes. Ideal. Yes. Uh, 
next is a hearing, um, a public hearing for the revocation of the North Child license for uh, Central. Uh, my name is Jenna Cook. I am acting solicitor this evening for the revocation hearing of Centerfold's mercantile license. Before we begin, I just want to make sure the public's expectations of what is happening here today is consistent with what we're actually doing. <clears throat> this hearing is solely related to the basis to revoke the mercantile license of Centerfold's. There was a tragedy that occurred and we all know a young man lost his life after being at Centerfolds that evening, but that is not the purpose of this hearing, and that is not the focus of this hearing. The focus of this hearing is the facts and evidence which form a legal basis that give the city the authority to revoke the mercantile license of Centerfolds. Um, there's, we're going to probably have a little bit of video tonight and some testimony um, a, a person that was present on that evening, but again, that is only related to the factual and legal basis for revocation of the license. This hearing does not deal at all with anything that caused or related to the young man's death. That is the subject of a pending criminal investigation. That investigation will occur when it is complete. The appropriate authorities will take whatever action is necessary or appropriate under the law with respect to this young man's death. So that is not the purpose of this hearing. And we are confining our, uh, our hearing and our evidence to the sole reason that the revocation should occur. Um, there will be some time for questions and comment, but we're going to ask everyone, although this is very emotional time for everyone, and there are family members and members of the community here. We understand it's difficult. We're trying to make this as easy as we can under difficult circumstances, but we want to make sure that there's no expectation that this is anything other than what we're here for, which is the revocation of the license. Um, I'm going to present testimony. Uh, Mr. Ward for the attorney for Centerfolds. Uh, is able to present testimony or cross-examine witnesses. The council is going to hear that. The council is going to make a determination of whether the conduct and the evidence that I put forward supports a revocation of the license under the provisions of the ordinance. They're going to vote on that. The standard that they're voting on is whether there's a preponderance of the evidence to demonstrate that the person, I'm sorry, that the business violated the provisions of the law and or the provisions which permit them to continue to have a mercantile license. I'm going to explain what that means at the end of this hearing. Council will go into closed session. They will have any discussions or deliberations, but their vote on the mercantile license and whether it will be rev rev revoked will occur in public. Um, and with that said, I think we can start. Yes. 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 Y
Mr. Ward, as attorney for Center Holds, has agreed to certain stipulations regarding the events that occurred at Center Holds related to the basis to remove the liquor license. Does anyone mind if I take off my mask? Okay, thank you. Um, the stipulations are basically, they mean they've agreed that, that these things occurred and they're not contested. So it's basically an admission. Those things are that Center Holds was issued a mercantile license by the city that Centerfolds re received adequate notice of this hearing and the city's basis for the action to revoke the mercantile license consistent with the requirements of the governing ordinance, which I will provide to you and read to you, that uh, Mr. Guzman and other underage individuals, including the one witness who I'm presenting this evening, were served alcohol beverages at Centerfolds that those individuals were under 21 at the time that they were served alcohol beverages and that they were served those beverages by Centerfold's employees in the late hours of January 22nd, which is a Saturday, into the early morning hours of January 23rd, which is Sunday. They also have agreed or stipulated that Mr. Uh, Mr. Guzman and Louis Martinez, who is testifying, uh, came into Centerfolds at the front entrance. They provided identification to the person at the front entrance, and that they were uh, they paid an entrance fee to enter the premises on that evening. I'm going to play. Um, so those those things which I just said to you are not contested for purposes of this hearing. You can take them as established in making your determination. The, um, I'm going to play a short video which will demonstrate um, and show the council a brief, a very, very brief video of them entering the establishment. Mr. Martinez is going to just give some context for that and then um, we're going to move forward with Mr. Ward being able to ask any questions if he wants to ask those and then I'll give a um, a recitation of the governing ordinance, what we're Okay. Mr. Martinez, are you here? Yep. Would you mind coming up, please? Where do you want me to sit? Here? Okay. Right there is fine. How old were you on uh, the late evening hours of January 22nd into the early morning hours of January 23rd, 2022? 19 years old. Okay. I'm going to play a video for you. It's going to be on that screen, and I'm just going to ask you some questions about it. Identify the location that this video is taken in. 
Yep, sorry, folks. Okay. And is, who's that person walking through the door? First one is me. That's right. Who's the second one? Kevin. And who's the person behind Kevin? Urban. And what are you doing right now? Uh, showing on my uh, ID. What identification did you provide to the, the gentleman standing behind the counter? Uh, my current ID, uh, the vertical. And when you, I'm going to show this for a second. Did you enter centerfolds after showing your identification? Uh, yes. Yeah, you paid a fee to enter? Yeah. Okay. And <coughs> did you consume alcoholic beverages on the evening of January 22nd into the early morning hours of January 23rd at centerfolds? Yes. Yeah, how did you receive or obtain those alcoholic beverages? Um, we, did, we took uh, three shots each of Costco Okay. Who served them to you? Um, did you pay for them? Yes. When you say we, who are you referring to? Sorry? You said we had three shots uh, of Me and Urban. Okay. And prior to serving those alcoholic beverages to you, did anyone ask you for identification <laughs> after you, you showed them your driver's license at the door? No. Okay. You paid for the beverages? Yes. Okay. Prior to January 22nd and January 23rd, have you ever uh, been present in centerfold? Yes. Okay. And I, on those, how many times did you know? Um, I've been there two times before. Okay. And on those two times that you went, did you provide a driver's license or identification prior to entering Centerfold to the person at the door? Yes. Okay. Was it, what did you provide to that person? My current uh, ID. Okay. Have you ever utilized a fake ID or anything that shows that you're over 21 years old when you attempted to enter Centerfold? No. Okay. And on the occasions that you were there prior to January 22nd and 23rd, did you purchase and were served and consumed alcohol? At Centerfolds? Yes. Okay. And were you served alcohol by employees of Centerfolds on those dates? Yes. Okay. And did anyone accompany you on the dates that you were at Centerfolds prior to January 22nd or 23rd? Uh, yes. My okay. friends. And were your friends over 21? Under 21. Okay. Did 
did your friends utilize a, what would be a fake ID, or did you observe them use anything that attempted to show centerfolds they were over 21 years old? No. Okay. And on those dates, were your friends also served alcohol? Yes. Were they served alcohol by centerfold staff? Yes. Those are all the questions I have for Mr. Martinez. Uh, Mr. Ward, if you have anything. Can I come up here? Sure. or 16 years old you wanted to drive? <clears throat> yes. Young. And this confusion about ages and permissions is very troubling because you're old enough to be sent to war, but you're not old enough to drink alcohol. Confusing for you, it was confusing for me growing up, and for many other students. But to the family, I know you're listening to me, and this is the first time that you've heard anything from the ownership. The reason was because this tragedy evolved. Social media, rumor, was flying wide. People were blaming the police department. People were saying that poor Mr. Guzman was taken into centerfolds and later on dumped outside. There was such a first one is Mayron Guzman. I'm sorry. Mayron Guzman. I, I didn't She's saying his name is Mayron Guzman. Mayron, I'm no, sorry. I should have asked if he had a nickname, but it's no, Mayron. It's not Mayron name, it's the last name. Mayron, yeah. Uh, so here's a situation where uh, three young men, friends, young guys, went to this club three times. I'm assuming they had a good time. But the club had a responsibility. The club had a responsibility to manage itself and I want to express from me to you the sorrow and the grief that the owner has and employees of Center for no one wanted this to happen and I'm going to express my sorrow my sorrow because I have three sons one grandson and I can't imagine pain you don't, even know. you don't even know. I can't imagine. So, we have stipulated that there's a fact that there was drinking going on and it shouldn't have. We're not contesting any of it. 
but we have to show up here at this hearing, provide any kind of <coughs> circumstance that hopefully gets us healed. And that's all I'm that's all I'm gonna say. I'll be here. I'm not from a big law firm out of state or something. I'm right here. And I'll feel it every time I drive by the the road. Because I can feel the pain that the family goes through. So that's all I have. Counsel, would you mind if I excuse Mr. Martinez? Yes. Mr. Martinez, you can return to your seat. Thank you. So, Council, I just want to provide to you, as well as our uh, persons in attendance here, the portion of the ordinance, the portion of the ordinance uh, which we are relying upon as a basis to revoke the mercantile license. That is under section 15516A5 of the present bill, city code. Can you say that number again? I can. 155-16A, small letter 5. I'm going to provide a copy to you all when you're uh, discussing this in your closed session. Um, that provision specifically says a license or permit issued by the city, and this is under the mercantile license section, may be revoked by the city council after notice in a hearing for any of the following causes. The section that we're moving forward for today or under is section five, which is conduct of the license activity, whether by the licensee himself or his agents or employees in an unlawful manner or in a manner that constitutes a breach of peace or a menace to the public health, safety, or general welfare. In this instance, the service of alcohol to a person under age is specifically prohibited by New Jersey law in Section 2C of the um, Criminal Code in the New Jersey statutes. Um, secondly, and in addition to that, there's a, a catch-all, which is any breach of peace or conduct that constitutes a menace to the public health, safety, or general welfare, which is also a second basis in addition to the um, statutory basis in that you, the service of alcohol to a minor um, is a menace to the public health or safety or general, general welfare of the public. Um, the ordinance also provides that the hearing has to occur the uh, license holder is allowed to cross-examine, present witnesses, present any defense or evidence that they want to, and they have a right to make a permanent record should they choose to at their expense. Um, the, the ordinance provides that the city council shall revoke or suspend as the case may be, but this is not, we're not moving under a suspension provision that does not relate to the evidence before us or the basis that we're proceeding today. So we're re revoking or moving to revoke only. Um, if they're satisfied by a preponderance of the evidence that the licensee is guilty of the acts charged. I'm going to give you uh, sort of layman's terms about what the preponderance of the evidence means. Uh, that means that <clears throat> proof that leads you to find the existence of a contested fact is more probable than it is not. So a more likely than not type of standard. Um, and once you make that determination um, that that occurred, that the illegal act occurred, or that the conduct constituted a menace or a breach to the public health, you're, you're permitted under the ordinance to revoke the mercantile license of centerfolds. Um, that is all I have for you at this time. If you'd like to um, convene or uh, someone has a motion to go into executive session so that you all can discuss the evidence that's been presented to you today and I'll provide to you the you know the actual ordinance and some additional information. Thank you, sir. Council, will we will we be going into closed session next time? You and I will not. They will. I will. Is that an unusual procedure that you're stating? No. Both do you want to Pardon me? Both attorneys can't come into closed session. 
Well, they're going to have their discussion in closed session about how they, they're going to deliberate and have a discussion in closed session. I don't think that that occurs with counsel for the other party. I would offer that, and I do know that you are very good as trial counsel, because you, you run the municipal court, but this is not a trial. This is a hearing. Understood. And um, I believe that counsel wants to, excuse me, counsel wants to hear everything. And there's some things that need to be said to counsel so that they have full grasp. Now, I've been a solicitor myself in the city of Atlantic City, and attorneys with issues that have to be driven in closed session are frequently in closed session. I will let, I will, I will say that my position is that it is not for the <clears throat> parties to be present in executive session. I'm not going to prohibit it or object to it, but I will state that I don't think it's necessary for that to occur. But I will let the council make their decision on that. Sure. Certainly council can eliminate me at any point after they have heard if they want to hear what I have to say. My, my one concern is that because this is an open public meeting that if there's something that needs to be said which would be a factor in the council's decision that that information should be placed before the public because that would be something that the public's entitled to hear. So if there were some facts or information that you think are relevant to the council's decision then because it's a public meeting I think the public's entitled to hear that if there's a, a perhaps a legal issue or something else that you would like to discuss or clarify. I don't think that's an issue, but I'm concerned if there's some other information that would be provided to the council that has not been provided to the public that may not be appropriate to be told in public session without the public hearing that information. Well, I think we've made it clear that Centerfolds has stipulated to all of your groups, right. okay? So what would be the harm for council to hear a context groups? As you know, I objected to you playing the video because I thought it would bring back, you know, some, some bad, bad, you know, vision for people in the family to see this. So I'm, I think this is council's decision. I'm okay it's with the council making that decision. I'm just giving my position on it. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Ward, can you present what you have to present now for the open public? Can you present it? Well, uh, we'd it, like to hear that. Well, then I'll hold off because I don't want to cause any pain to this family. Whatever. <laughs> I don't want to say one word to cause pain to this family. So if I can't say it quietly, and then you would have the opportunity to de deliberate, that's fine. But I will not say anything further that will cause harm to this family. Thank you. So if, um, Ms. Cook, um, so if we have any other questions or, you know, um, or we need some clarity on something, um, and we need just the ward, are we allowed to bring him back in um, just to clarify something? The purpose of an open public meeting is so that all information that you are relying upon or that is presented to you is available to the public to know that information. Right, but not asking anything that Mr. Moore is, is, you know, referring to. Just if we have a, need a better understanding of something that was either said, you know, in the open. Okay. Are we allowed to, you know, just bring them back? I'm just, my question is, if we let Mr. Ward be, I mean, my suggestion is, yes, you're allowed to. Okay. Why don't you take it on a case-by-case -case basis? If there's a yes. need for it, then you'll okay. address it at that time. Okay. So at this time, uh, I ask counsel for uh, I entertain a motion to go into an executive session. Necessary motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 At this time, City Council, we will go into the executive session to discuss um, these issues, and we will uh, convene. You can stay in, in the room. Stay in the room.
So, if, if you need to speak, please confine your what you need to say to three minutes a person. And please remember the focus of this hearing, which I'm going to again put on the record when the council comes in. Thank you. 
It's a beautiful year. It's not delicate there, right? I just want to make sure I I can see that. Do you want the Do you want the mic stand? everyone we're back to the um, public portion of what is the hearing part of the City Council meeting this evening um, just so you know the council met an executive session they discussed uh, the information that was presented to them they're going to vote separately uh, in public to all of you on their vote but before we do that there's a, a time for public comment the people that are going to make a public comment or on this list uh, there's two attorneys from our community that are going to speak um, they uh, we are limiting public comment to three minutes per person and I also want to remind you all that the purpose of this hearing today is the basis for revocation of the license the mercantile license of centerfolds and as I had said it when we started this is a, a tragedy and that <coughs> tragedy is subject to an entire investigation and procedure by the police and law enforcement and that is not why we're here today so as much as we all recognize this tragedy and we're, we feel terrible we want to make sure that the focus of your comments and what the focus of our council is on what is before them today and that is the legal basis and the factual basis to revoke the mercantile license and nothing else I understand there was some type of news reporting which may have said something other than what I said when we started here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I understand or I believe someone corrected that or it was taken down, but I'll repeat myself again. We're here for revocation of the mercantile license of centerfolds. The council is going to make a decision on that based on the evidence that was provided, the stipulations that were made by centerfolds through their attorney. and. Those are the facts that are relevant, and that's what we're going to address today. Everything else is for a different time, and that time will come. It's just not right now. Okay. Uh, I think the attorneys have discussed among themselves who's going first. Yeah, they have to come out of the executive session. That's good. Yeah. Uh, a motion to come out of the executive session. Motion. Motion. Uh, May I take a yes. Thank you. Council President, ladies and gentlemen of City Council, Mayor Ward, uh, good evening. Uh, and lo siento, familia de the urban. I'm very sorry for your loss. Please accept my condolences. I'm coming here today not necessarily as an attorney. I was born and raised here in Pleasantville, and as most of you know, I have my office here on North Main Street, excuse me, South Main Street. Um, I'm here as a concerned business owner and also concerned <coughs> prior citizen and resident of Pleasantville. Um, I know that we are here, as council indicated, um, regarding whether or not the mercantile license of Centerfold should be um, subject to revocation. And as just, again, a local business owner and a prior resident, I would encourage each one of you, and I respectfully request each one of you to please 
look and not only consider the facts in the law, which obviously you're obligated to do, and I know your counsel um, is very capable and advised you um, how to proceed with applying the facts in the law regarding this matter, I ask you to also look inside your hearts. Um, to, you have broad discretion here to address this issue. Um, and I think that everybody here, all the elected officials, all the appointed officials, law enforcement who did an amazing job with the initial investigation and continue to investigate this matter. Um, we're concerned, and I'm concerned, with the, the health, safety, and welfare, and quality of life of everybody here in Pleasantville, whether you're a citizen, whether you're a visitor, whether you're a business owner, whether you work here. Um, and that includes, clearly, um, my, my concern for Irving and his family. Um, I'm the president of the Hispanic Leadership Association in New Jersey, and I'm also on the board of directors for the Spanish Community Center. We're very concerned um, with making sure that all, all individuals within our town and within our county, um, that their concerns and their, their fears are addressed, which I know each one of you takes seriously, that their concerns will be addressed. Um, I would just submit respectfully that although I'm not, I was not back during deliberations regarding the revocation and I did not present the case, it was very well done by counsel and also even counsel for, for centerfolds uh, with their stipulations. I would just respectfully request that you seriously consider revoking the license uh, of centerfold. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Thank you. Uh, Mayor Ward. Your name, your name, your address. Yes, sir. Uh, Ed Weinstock, 3123 Atlantic Avenue, Atlantic City. Uh, that is where my office is located. Uh, Mayor Ward, members of the council. Um, several, in fact, if not everyone tonight that has spoken before you has told you, has given you emotion, an emotional plea as to the tragedy that this family has had to endure. Tonight, you have the power to make sure that there's not another tragedy that another family has to endure. Okay, um, this shouldn't have happened. And there is ample history that this council and that this town should have been made aware of regarding this establishment. I'm gonna give you some other facts. 12 calls for disorderly persons offenses, 11 calls for suspicious persons or activity, five calls for fights or disputes, three calls for assaults, three calls for other kinds of disturbances, three calls for thefts, uh, an emer calls for emergency medical services, a call for a burglary of a car, a call for a, a stolen motor vehicle, a call for a robbery. These are all the police calls that have just been made to go to the location of Center Falls just in the last three years. Just in the last three years you have all those calls. And many others that I didn't list here because they didn't jump off the page. Is it any surprise that we find ourselves here today? There has been a progressive deterioration that ultimately led to what happened here. Now those are just the police calls. Some other information I'd like to give the council. This is from the Alcohol Beverage Control Committee. They're the ones that decide whether they get to keep their liquor license. In 2011, Centerfolds paid $48,000, $48,800 to avoid a 100-day suspension of their license. In 2019, they paid $150,000 in fines in lieu of an indefinite suspension. In 2020, just 2020, we're only in the beginning of 2022, they paid $35,000 in lieu of an 82-day suspension. What does that tell you? They don't care. They don't change their practices. They just figure they're going to buy their way out of it. Just like their attorney who came here today. You have the power to avoid another tragedy. It is clear by their actions that they think that they are just going to write another check and go about their business. 
how many more tragedies do we need to have before everyone finally realizes they are not a good citizen of this community? And because they are not a good citizen, their license should be revoked. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you just state your name and where you're from? Eduardo Alvarez, uh, 20 Primrose Drive, Sicklerville, New Jersey. Thank you, council members, for giving us the time to speak our grievances at tonight's hearing. This is not going to be an easy, an easy one, council members. I understand that you have a difficult choice in front of you. In order for there to be a, a just system, you need to have an impartial stance. But tonight should not, about be, should not be about being impartial. We should be looking at whether or not a business that serves consumption of alcohol, that f fails to protect its, its patrons, that inflicts its own version of justice, should remain under the same protections they willingly stripped away for one of their patrons that night. If every story has two sides, then I'm here to tell you the human one. My family is struggling. My mom and dad cry all the time. As Mexican-Americans, immigrants, they work hard every day to provide us with the life they never had. Shattered are their American dreams and hopes for a better tomorrow. I can't imagine working so hard for the fruits of your labor to go to spoil. I can't imagine a more painful outcome, the feeling of hopelessness, of shock, confusion. It's daunting just thinking about it. My twin brothers lost their best friend. No more dinner dates. No more random mini vacations. No more sharing memes or inside jokes. The middle child lost a baby brother that was part of a trio. That was his companion. That was his friend, always looking out for Irvin because they were the only ones left in the house. They had each other. And the youngest, he lost his hero. The person that grew up with him, the person that protected him, looked out for him, made sure he woke up for school, made sure he got home safe, and I lost a baby brother as well. But my daughter, she lost one of her best uncles a little princess can ever have. It tore her up. She cried at my shoulders and I hugged her dearly because I didn't know what else to say or what words to use to make it better. Council members, a neglectful business causes so much pain and hurt to families and communities. It leaves you like a deer in headlights, shocked you can't even move. A neglectful business puts profits over people and allows shady dealings to occur inside its walls, and then it uses protection placed for good businesses as a sheath or cover. A neglectful business fails on basic principles, rules, and regulations. It doesn't even card adolescents or underage minors. A neglectful business allows it, the patrons, right, to leave intoxicated. No cab, no Uber, no designated drivers, no way home. A neglectful business will tell you that this was an isolated event, but it isn't. I've seen work, I've seen toxic work environments, and leadership is always behind the wheel. Employees will do what they're allowed to do. Council members, a monetary fine is a spit on the face for my grieving family. A monetary fine invalidates the countless hours and manpower the Pleasantville Police Department invested to find my brother. And a monetary fine is a stone thrown at the volunteers that work tirelessly through the nights, sinking, falling, tripping in the cold marshlands, hoping to find him. Council members, the power is in your hand. Save your community, protect its people. Send the message to all businesses that this behavior will have serious consequences. Stop this business from inflicting so much hurt and anguish. Thank you. Council President, members of the Pleasantville City Council, 
My name is Irvin Moreno Rodriguez, and I reside at 730 New Maple Road in the city of Pleasanton. Tonight, I am speaking on behalf of the hundreds of family, friends, and community members outside of this building and inside. The same cohort that has rallied outside of the Centerfold's location for exactly one month today in the freezing cold, in the torrential rain, and even in the snow. Justice for Irving are not just arrest, verdicts, sentences. Justice for Irving is ensuring that what happened to this young man at the Centerfold's location never happens again. Justice for Irving means never putting his mother, his father, his brothers, a community through what they've been through. And let me tell you, we've been through hell. Justice for Irvin means voting for a better Pleasantville, and that means voting to revoke, to strip away the Centerfold's mercantile license. We've heard the legal arguments tonight, but let me remind you about the moral arguments. Had people stood up, had this business trained its employees to be upstanders instead of bystanders, had someone working at Centerfolds that night said, what I'm seeing here tonight is not right, Irving would be at home tonight with his parents. And I would be too, along with my brother. But no, we're here tonight discussing a business that has lost its privilege. And it, it is a privilege to operate in our beautiful city. Every single one of you in this chamber, including you, Mayor Ward, ran on a platform to make Pleasantville better, to shed this city's waning facade and steer her into a brighter future. The correct vote from all of you this evening will move us closer to that goal. I recognize this council is neither responsible for the death of Irving. And I know that the city solicitor has told us that, and we're just discussing the mercantile license. Nor is this council responsible for the causes of taxpayer subsidized police calls to the Centerfold's location. However, voting to not revoke the mercantile license tonight, our city, my city, their city, this community will hold you responsible for the next tragedy that occurs at 201 East Delilah Road. Do the right thing. Take away the mercantile license. Thank you.
ha habido tantas cosas, pero nadie ha hecho nada. Yo no sé si es por miedo o por qué no han hablado. ¿Cuántas muertes más quieren para cerrar ese local? Porque como Irving, es, es un ejemplo que ellos no siguen las reglas. Queremos que se haga justicia para Irving. Hi, my name is Rafael Guzman. My address is 536 Macroyne Street, Pennsylvania, PA. I am here to demand justice. I also demand for Centerfolks to be closed permanently. They are responsible for my nephew's death for three reasons. One, serving alcohol to a minor. Second, putting him in danger by kicking him out of Centerfolks. Three, for security not being there for him doing their job. Security themselves said they kicked them out. That is why Centerfolks is responsible for my nephew's, er, my nephew Urban's death. There has been several several incidents before, but no one no one has done justice. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of fear, but Center Folks is still open and running. How many more deaths are we waiting for to close this place down? Urban is just another example that they did not follow the law. We want justice for Urban. Amen. My name is Sarah Mayer. I'm living in 12 Petro One, in Hamilton, New Jersey. Estoy aquí para exigir justicia para que este lugar Centerfold lo cierre para siempre. Este lugar es este lugar es el culpable de que mi hijo Irving me lo asesinara, ya que siendo menor de edad le le permitieron la entrada y le vendieron alcohol en ese lugar. Fue donde a mi hijo lo asesinaron. Tres hombres lo, lo golpearon brutalmente. Y los encargados de este lugar, Centerfold, no hicieron nada para ayudarlo y evitar que mi hijo perdiera la vida a consecuencia de lo que le hicieron. No solo mataron a mi hijo, sino también me mataron a mí y a, a toda mi familia, a mis hijos dejándonos un gran dolor, es por eso que exijo que cierren ese lugar permanente y exijo justicia para mi hijo. Solo le pido al jurado que tomen una decisión correcta y que se pongan en mi lugar. ¿Qué ustedes harían? ¿Qué ustedes hubieran hecho? Si en lugar de mi hijo Irving hubieran matado a uno de sus hijos de ustedes, ¿cómo se sentirían? Por eso exijo que ese lugar sea cerrado para que otras madres no pasen lo mismo que estoy pasando yo y además lo mismo. yo sé que mi hijo no va a regresar conmigo, pero Liz que se haga justicia y que se toque en su corazón y que se apiaden de, de una madre porque como les dije no mataron a mi hijo mataron a mí también y a toda mi familia y no es justo gracias My name is Sarah Mayran. I reside at 12 Patriot Walk at Carlton Township. I am Irving Mayran's <coughs> mother. I am here to demand justice for my son. I demand that Santa Folks get closed for good. This place is to blame for my son being murdered. Him being a minor, they allowed him in. Not only that, not only that but he was also served alcohol while, be, while being underage. Three men brutally beat him up at Santa Folks' property, and they did, not, they did nothing to stop it. My son lost his life due to all of this. But they didn't only kill him, they killed me as well and my family, leaving a major amount of pain behind. And that is why I demand this place to be closed. I only ask for a fair decision and for you to put yourself in my place and to stop and think that it could have been any of your kids instead of it being my son that was killed. I demand justice. I don't want any of this to happen to, any, to anyone else. Thank you. Steve Young, and I'm here on behalf of National Action Network, South Jersey Chapter, and we have an office right across the street, 
and this is what we do. My address, Atlantic City, New Jersey. And this is what we do and we consistent with doing. Helping and supporting the families, especially the mothers and the fathers that have lost a loved one. This incident is very tragic to our entire community. Because when you lose a human being to this type, and don't know when it happened, how it happened, and so forth, it reflects on all of us. But I just want to say on behalf of the black community especially, you don't see a lot of us here, but some of us are here, that we support and we love you all because your hurt is our hurt. If it's hurting in our community, it's hurting us as well. And I just want to applaud the family and all of you for being so peaceful during this time because you really show the world that you can do something in the peaceful manner. So I just want to applaud you at this point. Now this revocable license is 155.1685. That's what the duties you have as council people today. To revoke a license, it's already been said that the peace of our community has been violated because of this tragic act. The peace, that's what the ordinance says. I didn't, we didn't make that up. So you have to make a decision today and it should have been non-contested after what we saw. That the neglect of letting this happen in our community and letting this happen to a human being should not be overlooked. We want justice and we want it now. We've been with this family since it started. You probably didn't see us on all the cameras, but we was there showing love to the family and our community. And we just want to say at this time, that was a legal act. It's a breach to the public health to allow someone underage to come into an establishment and do something like this. So we want to say to the owners and all those who've been allowing this to happen in our community, stop it now. Stop it now so it won't happen to nobody else. When it comes to the licensing, revoke it. That's your duty. That's the accountability that we're going to hold you accountable for right now as council people to do your job that you was voted in office to do. So revoke it. That means terminate it immediately. Thank you. No justice, no peace.
yes vote. Yeah, I'm going to read the okay, go resolution. Uh, the re resolution number 61, the Broken and Mercantile License of Pleasantville Metals Incorporated, trading as Crazy Horse, trading as Cinefold's Cabaret. I need a motion. Necessary motion. Roll call, Davenport? Yes. Roll call, Caballero? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Pomona? Yes. Korea? Yes. Yes, I vote yes to um, vote based on the admission of the infraction.